John Locke's uh, Two Treatises of Government. Uh, this is the same John Locke uh, with the, you know, Newtonian atomic uh, metaphysics um, that I discussed in an earlier video. And, uh, but John Locke is also writing uh, on political philosophy and uh, he writes the two treatises uh, actually anonymously, uh, but later it comes out that uh, that it was uh, he who was the author. Um, and uh, so we get some very interesting ideas in the two treatises. And uh, now uh, this uh these were published in uh, 1689 at the end of 1689 so this is just about a, a year after the glorious revolution of november of 1688 uh, when william of orange crossed uh you know the channel and uh, took over the crown of england and from that point forward we get the sustained uh, uh, parliamentary uh, monarchy that exists in England even to this day. Um, and so John Locke is writing in the wake of that glorious revolution and right at the beginning of the institution of, of parliamentary uh, monarchy. And to a large extent, uh, the two treatises are directed at, at, at promoting a kind of republicanism that actually fits well with uh, the historical development of parliamentary monarchy uh, in England. And uh, so the, the first treatise is a sustained attack against uh, Sir Robert Filmer. Uh, he was a royalist uh, that lived in the 1870s. <clears throat> excuse me, and, and who uh, published a book uh, called uh, Patriarcha in 1680 that contained uh, most of his arguments for the divine right of kings and, um, and for a sort of absolute monarchy as, as uh, you know, coming down from uh, Christianity and the Bible and, and all this kind of stuff. And so the first treatise is... Uh, Locke attacking that divine right of kings argument for absolute monarchy. Uh, so it's anti-royalist. Uh, and then in the second treatise, he actually, it started out probably as just a continuation as book two uh, of, of the overall work um, uh, on government. But uh, he, he uh, near the time of publication, added a lot of material and, and gave it its own title. So the second treatise is uh, an essay concerning the true original extent and end of civil government. And here end is like the end, like the final cause, like Aristotelian final cause. Uh, what is the purpose of civil government? Okay, and in the second treatise, and this is what we wanna focus on, um, Locke develops his own arguments for Republican style government uh, based in natural law. So this is a natural law type argument, uh, but it's a natural law argument that's very empiricist, not Aristotelian in outlook, um, which fits, you know, with Locke's metaphysics. Um, and I wouldn't say that the metaphysics uh, is overbearing uh, in his political work, but it, it's certainly in the style and some of the fundamental assumptions that he makes, it is present. Uh, but these are assumptions that by and large, most Englishmen, not necessarily of Locke's own day, but within the following decades, immediately after uh, the publication. So going into uh, the 18th century, uh, Locke's view, metaphysical views became so ubiquitous and uh, favored in England that these metaphysical ideas just come across as common sense. And so this gave 
Locke's political writing, uh, quite a, law, a long life and an influential uh, life. Um, and, and, you know, he does develop a unique theory of government here, unique theories on sovereignty, on uh, property, and this whole labor theory of property, which then is also a labor theory of value, which is very significant for uh, Marxism. And, um, and that comes to Karl Marx by way of the classical English economist, um, Adam Smith and uh, Ricardo. So uh, this uh, here we see sort of a, a one of the one of the original sort of formulations of the labor theory of value, which is uh, very significant from this Marxist perspective that we're we're trying to understand. Um, Okay, so I think that's good. We're going to focus on the second treatise, and, and I want to look at uh, chapter five of property, where he develops this idea of property, and then chapter seven of political or civil society. And in both of these chapters, we get this uh, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness type of formulation, but he gives it in, in three different ways um, in chapter seven and chapter 11. Uh, so I want to take a look at that because that, of course, uh, shows up in the Declaration of Independence for the United States. And, um, and that's part of Locke's political uh, philosophy. The influence of his political philosophy is that it actually is embedded in the Declaration of Independence and uh, informs a lot of the United States Constitution. All right, so um, I'll leave it at that and I'll see you in the next in the next video.